Hey, what's going on, everybody, man? You're tuning in. You're on the ride with Remedy. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. If you're looking on YouTube, appreciate you. If you're listening right now on Fox99.com, we appreciate you. Right now, I gotta, I, I'm excited. I'm humble. I'm honored. I have none other but our newest mayor, the city of favor, our mayor, Mayor Mitch Colvin. How you doing, sir? How you doing, man? Good, appreciate the opportunity. Oh, no. Hey, the president's all mine, sir. <laughs> I'm definitely, definitely excited. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask a lot of questions as far as, like, you know, you know, we're in a hip hop R and B yeah. station, so I'm actually some questions like that. But where did it all begin for for you? From the political standpoint, yes. yeah, um, man, I grew up here. I grew up uh, right off Murchison Road, off the Merc, uh, with the E Smith, and just loved my city. And I, I came back uh, from from college in Virginia, uh, Mortuary School, and started just being an entrepreneur and, and trying to do my thing and build a family, build a business. And uh, in 2013, I kind of just looked around my community and uh, saw that it was on the decline. You know, wasn't a lot of positive uh, activity going on and it, it just concerned me and it kind of sparked a fire in me to want to get involved and so I started out on city council, mm -hmm. was able to represent that district, District 3 that, that uh, is in and around that area that I grew up in and served there from uh, 2013 as uh, District 3 representative to 2017 mm -hmm. and 2015 to 17 I was the mayor pro tem and so I kind of had an opportunity to be in a leadership role on the council and I saw that the city had a lot of potential. We, we were on the move in the right direction and I felt that I really couldn't accomplish it without being, you know, in the in the leadership role as the mayor. And so threw my hat in the ring twenty seventeen and, you know, Fevo stood up and believed in, in my vision. Yeah, and and I try to be by the same thing when I voted for you. Oh, I appreciate that for you. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what's a big thing too that um especially in North Carolina that uh, we have a we have a minority group on um, district district council. We have which is our majority on, of course, black mayor in Fayetteville, and then also in Charlotte, woman black yeah. mayor. And I think that's a that's a big plus. Well, you know, it, it just goes to show that that minorities are getting in leadership roles and mm -hmm. uh, throughout the city and, and in the South, particularly, yeah. it's a tide turning, and uh, and I'm glad to see it. And I'm, I've been trying to reach out and develop relationships with, like you said, Vilas and. In Charlotte, uh, great mayor, trying to see what things we have in common, have uh, similar demographics with our cities, and just trying to make sure we're moving forward. But it's, it just speaks to the times and the tide changing it. it blacks in leadership, mm -hmm. um, African Americans, minorities, Hispanics, women. Uh, it mm -hmm. just shows that you know you have a lot of capable talent. I'm glad to see that the, the public is starting to believe in that. Same here. And then our city, uh, our, our police chief, she's Panamanian. I'm Panamanian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When she's it, doing a great job too. Man. Yeah, she is. When did be when did when did it begin to sink in that you are the mayor of Fayetteville? So you know, sometimes uh, you know I have to have to think about it, but you know I try to stay focused on on what it is my mission is. My mission is to have a better city, so it's not really about me. It's, it's just a part of the process, and uh, sometimes I pinch myself, never thinking that that was in my future <laughs> to do it. But uh, you know, you never know what God has in store for you, man. That's what's up. Yeah. And um, like when the cheers began and everything, man, how'd you feel? How'd you feel? Yeah, it, it felt great. Uh, you know, it was a lot of hard work. It's kind of a, uh, a intense process, and you know, I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit. But you know, it was it was great. At the end of it, it was all worth it. And mm -hmm. but you know, with all of that came responsibility, and so I really had to check myself real quick and say, listen, we got to get down to business and. And uh, and we'll celebrate later. So that's once we have a great city, that's when I want to hit a cheer. That's what my boss yeah. always says. Is like you know we cheer for a little bit. Okay, let's get back to work. Right, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So like and and matter of fact, we can get into that now, um, cause like with with a great leader, of course comes a great team around you. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about how your team and everything got yeah. together and made this happen? Yeah, uh, for the the election and for city council, you know, for the mm -hmm. election, I had I had people that just believed in me, knew knew me all their lives. I had others that I had met that heard my story, you know, that listen, I'm I'm not, I wasn't groomed from the beginning as a politician. I made mistakes. I got in trouble as a youth, you know, and mm -hmm. I stepped out of line with a lot of, and I could relate to a lot of uh, struggles that a lot of young African American black males and Hispanics and and minorities go through every day um, but you know it just shows you that if you persevere and stay focused on on what it is that you want to do that you can do it and so a lot of people believed in that and not only uh, not only that part but you know and they stepped in and helped me and certainly I couldn't 
have done any of this without you know people that volunteered their time, volunteered their resources, donated to my campaign, believed in all of that. Uh, you know, my family and, and, and God, of course, was at the head of all of it. Amen. Um, and the other part to it was uh, as an elected official, you know, building the team. You know, we have a great council. Uh, I have a lot of belief in them. Each one of us uh, have a lot of have our own strengths. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my job as, as the mayor is to try to bring and harness all that energy in the same direction. And uh, we're, we're doing it and, and we're getting some great things done in the city. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. That's totally awesome. And, and did you always see yourself in this position? Never. Um, that's the thing about it. You know, I never saw myself in politics, uh, although I stayed in tune with what was going on. Uh, when I got involved with council, I said, you know, I may do one or two terms and, and that's it. And never, never, never imagined the fact that I would run for mayor and um, ended up in this position today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, with this, well, of course, being mayor, so I know it's one of your great moments. In your past, is there any way you could share like your experiences or any other great moments that you had in this run? Yeah, I mean, the greatest moments was, uh, you know, the birth of my kids and, and being a father. That was, uh, you, you can't describe it. And if, if you have children, you, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, three of them. Yeah, so, <laughs> three so, yeah and I have three. So um, okay. that's the greatest moment. Um, then, you know, your accomplishments in, in business, you know, when uh, at 21, I took over a family business that was going through some challenges. By 27, I had owned uh, two funeral homes uh, versus the one that we started with. And so, you know, you have milestones in life, but you try to stay focused and not to allow any of that to become the focus. Because, you know, the, the same way that you obtain it, you can lose it at any minute. And the same thing with this leadership role, you know, I try to make sure I stay humble, stay accessible, and just try to keep it real, man, and right. stay focused on what the goal is. I know you were just mentioning about we all go through struggles, especially us as minorities, you know, and for for me, I know I went through some issues as well. Um, it is, what would you tell, like, especially like the youth or, or even from the age range of 21 to 27 or uh, 28 to 35, um, what would you tell the person, like, if, if you're going through struggles or I'm going through any struggles and, you know, I don't want to touch any type of any of, be specific on explaining any of our struggles because we all go through it. But the thing is, what would you tell that person, um, that age group, you know, how to manage and tune out that noise or how to manage that? that? Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, what I had to do was make a decision that I wanted to, to do better and make a change about it. And so there are certain things that will come with that. And, you, and the first person that you have to convince that you can do it is yourself. And so, you know, once you make your mind up to listen, uh, this path that I'm on is, is, is not, doesn't have a bright future, it's not where I want to be, I can't uh, do what I need to do for my children and for myself and, and to get the life that I think I deserve. Uh, you have to make that change and you have to eliminate any distractions. I tell people that all the time and that is that are people. You know, sometimes we have to eliminate our people that may be family, that may be, you know, loved ones, maybe girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, whoever it is that's in between you and where you are trying to get to. Uh, you have to make, maybe separate yourself for a little bit. Uh, and then I would say if you have made a mistake, it's not the end of the road. You know, I'm a big advocate on, um, you know, second chances. Yeah. You know, because I've had, I've had my number second chances yeah. for not only myself or, um, you know, enough uh, for everybody. And tell them that uh, you can stay focused on, on that. And, you know, hopefully in the leadership role, I want to use that time and work with my council members to create pathways for success for people. So even if you have messed up, uh, that's not the end of the process, and not the end of the story, unless you want it to be. Oh, you know, you know what? I meant to ask you. I'm gonna try this one second. I meant to ask you. Was there a specific song that was played when you won, when you won and became mayor? Oh man. Um, let me see. I mean, you know, I had I had certain songs that that, that I listened to that kind of pep me up uh -huh. uh, before different events or debates or whatever. I'm trying to think who... Can you share on those songs? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there was one, uh, you know, and I listened to all genres of music, so, okay. uh, you know, it was, I guess in particular, uh, one was uh, Kurt Flanken's One, Two, Three, you know, I got the victory, I used to, used to yeah. beat that into myself. You know, I used to listen to Jay-Z about, uh, you know, New York, how great he bragged about his city, but, you know, I kind of just thought about Fayetteville and the spirit of that, and so, it, it was it was different times in different moments when you know you would do that and I just needed that quiet time to kind of stay focused and mm -hmm. to uh, 
and the, and and to kind of calm me down. You know, music is a has an excellent ability to, to calm you down and to make you rethink and, and remember where you were at a lot of times. There's so, so many songs that can help you get through. Um, yeah, some things that go keep you focused. You know? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of youth programs and stuff like that. You know, that that, that can help they take the kids off the street, right. keep them involved in things. Um, you know, try to try to keep them in, try to keep them busy and not and also at the same time figure out what's their goals in order to succeed in life. Um, is is there any anything that maybe you want to share or that the city of Fable has for the youth to get involved with? Well, that's that's a uh, that's a good point. In fact, uh, one of the things I ran on was was putting a focus on the the seventeen to thirty. Uh, population, you know, they call them millennials, different names. But uh, I introduced the council, um, an initiative that in the next few weeks I'll be having some community meetings and, and get that population together so that they can weigh in on the kind of things that we can uh, employ as policymakers that'll make the city more attractive and help that population be more successful in staying here. Um, and so. You know, the city works, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to do was expand uh, the after school and the youth programs, you know, we put some extra money in the budget to do that. A lot of times at the end of the school day, uh, these kids come home, parents are out working and doing whatever, and so they're raising themselves. And so uh, one of the things we wanted to do is use some of our recreation community centers uh, while we have them there to get uh, other people in our community to, to help mentor them, help them with homework, help them stay on the right path to, to maybe bridge that gap between where the parents who are trying to make a living and provide uh, can't do, just need a little help. And mm -hmm. so there are a few things like that. Uh, but the main thing is that I want to get the youth, I want to get the millennial population to the table to tell us what it is that we need to do. Uh, I, I talk to some of them, and depending on which age group, you know, you talk to the high school and below, mm -hmm. man, the ball, uh, we need a new mall, the mall we have, it, it, it's this, it's that. You know, you talk to the other group, uh, the young adults, college age, they say, look, you know, when I finish college or when I go off to college, I'm, I'm going to other communities, I'm not coming back. You know, and I have a, a 20 year old and a 24 year old daughters, two of my daughters are that, that age, and I talk to them all the time about coming back home. And they were like, well, you know, first it was no, absolutely not, daddy. And then now it's like, well, you know, we'll think about it. And so, you know, I'm working on that, but I just want to make the community the kind of place that after you go off to college or if you stay here and go to school or if you learn how to do a trade, uh, you know that there's something for you here, and um, and I want to make sure that the uh, and the city is doing a great program uh, called Icon, okay. where um, you can do internships during the summertime, and so uh, we need to make it um, possible for our children to be able to work. You know, yeah. you know, high school students that would like to have a job rather than you know to sit at home or to to get into mischief. You know, right. So. Exactly. Okay. Right. What is something that many don't know about you? What it takes to hold your position, like you know, the behind the scenes and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm pretty much an open book, man. And the thing about politics, it flushes it out of out, you know. And so for me, I'm just uh, a guy that, that you know I try to stay grounded and, and, and keep it about the mission, uh, you know. And I try to, um, you know, I'm I'm very open minded and progressive thinking. So mm -hmm. when people come to me with ideas, I, I don't mind trying it, you know, and I think that if you if you, you do things different, you get different results. And so I'm all about any ideas that make sense, that uh, that think outside the box. And so people that know me know that, that I'm innovative and I think like that. And so I, I want to transfer that into the mindset of the council in the city. What's what's life of Mayor Mitch Coleman outside outside of there? Cause like for me as a DJ, well my life is the kids, gym. So yeah, I've got that. You know, I start off early in the morning. You know, I usually have a little devotion time where I kind of get my mind right for the day. I have a couple. I try to commit to going to the gym uh, at least two, three times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a father full time, so. We got two girls that are off in college. Uh, I have one that is here, and so she usually dictates a lot of what I do. Um, and then I have my businesses, so I have to, you know, show my face around um, my, my businesses to make sure that uh, everything is going like it needs to. And then, of course, then the mayor, you know, and that's a part-time on paper, full-time, mm -hmm. and a half uh, in reality. But you know, it's, <laughs> it's all good. Man. So, okay. So just speak, because I have my personal questions about yeah. like. It was going to Fayetteville. There's some rumors, and I hope it happens, 
trying to see because you know us on the podcast we gotta like to get some exclusive right I heard there might be a sheets coming is that true uh I've heard the same thing but I haven't confirmed that that's the case okay but yeah um but we've got a lot of uh good projects coming this way okay and uh care care to share uh, you know, of course, we know about downtown. Like we're on yeah. a mission to transform downtown and in, into a place to be. Field, yeah. Not only baseball, but you know, you have uh, other quality of life items. So we want to make it where it's it's a lot going on all the time. And mm-hmm. so you know, partnerships with the Astros. There, uh, we're we're now working on partnerships to bring more uh, festivals and concerts and, mm-hmm. and just quality of life outdoor type activities here. You yeah. know, I've talked to. Uh, city manager on the 4th of July. I don't, I don't ever want us to have another 4th of July that doesn't have uh, a banging um, something downtown with, with music, fireworks, you know. Yeah, Usually we, we, yeah. you, we're at Fort Bragg yeah, and we're doing that, but, yeah, but we, you know, yeah. we're too big for that. So yeah. it's now it's time for us to start behaving like a city. And uh, so those are some of the kind of things that, that are in store. Yeah. Will there be any type of renovation or anything to the um the, the old Princeton Chocolate Factory? Yeah, they're, they're actually doing a massive uh, facelift over there, and that'll be one and two bedroom lofts, downtown lofts and apartments, and so, and then beside it is a is a, uh, a hotel being constructed uh, to that will have you know rooftop uh, bar and pool and different things, and so wow. uh, it, it's 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 shaping up real nice, man, and so that energy is moving down to the other parts of downtown, which we hope to have. Um, you know, other quality of life um, businesses will, will come in. So, you know, if you and your family, you and your kids need a safe environment to come hang out, you know, downtown should be the place to be. Okay. Uh, if they want to get any information or um, any type of, you know, just on the on any upcoming projects or anything you got going on, you know, as far as the council is, how, how can the people reach out to you? Yeah, so of course, uh, the city of Fayetteville has a website and a Facebook page. You just type it in, uh, cityoffayetteville.org, I think is the is the site, and, and city of Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, Facebook, it should pop up. And then you can always go to my site. You know, I try to keep as much information about what's coming. You know, Mitch Colvin, uh, mayor, and you'll, you'll, it'll pop up on Facebook. I also have an Instagram, and so uh, just staying engaged. And then you guys, you know that we you're a big part of, of help pushing information out. But if you want to know what's happening, what's going on, reach out to me, and I'll make sure that we make the right connections to you. But uh, my Facebook and Instagram page should be a good good site. All right, man. Appreciate y'all joining around, Mayor Mitch Cole. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Appreciate it. Man. All right. Make sure you follow us on fox99.com, fox99nc on Instagram, and like us on our Facebook fan page at Fox 99. You can catch the video there. And also, if you want the audio part, if you're taking a trip or you're on the road trying to listen to our podcast, Fox 99, excuse me, Foxy99.com. Peace.